Hi guys, welcome back to the UE4 tutorials. And today we're going to add some drawers in our interactive drawers. So if you've had the free furniture pack from the last tutorial uh, from the marketplace, then use that. Uh, if not, then you'll have to follow something, um, a similar process, but I guess with a different object, different actor. Let's go into free furniture pack blueprints. And here you'll find BP bed drawer, which we're going to copy and paste here. I'm going to rename this to interactive drawer. Let's go inside. So in the blueprint, you'll find the default stuff, which we don't want. Let's go to viewport. Here you'll see the two meshes that can slide. So they're actually movable, which is nice. Let's rename this one, the top one, uh, to F2 is to rename, by the way. Drawer 1, let's go with that. So we're going to use that as um, our animation. So what do we want to do? We want to, in the event graph, create a new custom event. That event is going to be called open, just open, I guess. And it's going to do something, but for now, we're just happy with this. Uh, let's drag it over to the viewport, uh, place it as needed. I guess scale as well, because that's kind of small. Yeah, that'll do. And what else? Well, we need the player blueprint, which is under first person VP blueprints. Uh, first person character because we've added some stuff in terms of ray casting previously I want to reuse that input action reset player is that I don't remember what the key was for this um, project settings input and then you'll find reset player is F Let's rename this to interact. And then let's change the F key to E. Where's E? <coughs> okay, interact, E, done. Let's go here. That uh, is not renamed, so I'll just create a new one. Um, input action, interact. Yeah, that's what I want. I don't actually know what this is now, so I'm just going to delete that and move these further away in case we might need that in the future, but I don't think so. I'm going to copy some of these bits because this is what our raycasting does. And we pretty much want this entire bit. Control C, move back to where our input action is copy and paste and connect the pressed um, pin to the line trace by uh, line trace by channel so I already covered the, these bits in the previous tutorial so I'm not going to talk about them what I do want to know is if there was a hit and if there was would like to take the actor that was hit and cast it to interactive drawer and only do that when there was a hit as interactive drawer I can now call open on it because it's a function or a custom event that is specific to this blueprint compile save and I'm pretty sure that works because it worked in the last tutorial but if you want to test quickly print string hi compile save and run so if you press e on this thing it should say hi and you can see that into the top left um, of the viewport if i press e on anything else nothing happens yeah that's fine so uh, get rid of the print string now what we want is some kind of an animation of this drawer one 
in particular, if you look at this, what we want is to do this essentially. That's moving it along the y axis, and you can see this um, in the details pane. The y value changes if I do this, which means we want to change the y value. Uh, I want to write this as 10, so it's in there. Maybe move the other one to 10 as well, because I don't want any decimal place values, because when they're in um, whole numbers, they're just much easier to work with, or to snap to, I guess. So that's 10, which means we want to move from 10 in the y axis to 50. Yeah, that'll do. Let's move this back. Uh, so we need a timeline, which is something that we already used before, which is nice. Uh, open drawer timeline. <coughs> now open one to play from start. On the update, we want to grab this drawer one and we want to add local offset. And we, on, we only want to change this uh, Y, right? So we're going to split this into its components or into its parts. We want to use this Y. We want to move from 10 to 50. So you can either change your timeline by double clicking and then changing the float track from 10 to 50 or you can do it from one, uh, 0 to 1 and then multiply it as needed. Let's do the simple way and then just move from 10 to 50. So let's add one here, just right click, add key and then right click, add key there and then just modify these as needed. I guess first of all we need to change the uh, length of the animation. Let's set it to one second. I'm kind of skimming through this because we covered this in an earlier tutorial. At time zero the value should be should be 10. I guess it's up there somewhere. And that one should be 50 at time one because we're only animating between zero and one. Yeah, so it goes from 10 to 50. <clears throat> Which means, let's give it a name uh, to this track. How do I rename this? Here we go. Um, local Y, I guess, because that's what it is. That's lo local y goes directly into y. And on update, that's what we do. Just move it over here. Align these nicely. Kind of nicely, I guess. And play from start. That should do it. Or at least it will play one way, and then we'll see. Click F. Whoa, that was fast. Oh, because we don't want to add local, we want to set local, right? Because that's going to add that local Y value at every frame. So this is not what we want. What we want is set local. Um, set local location, set location. Set relative location. Okay. Why would you say local there and relative here? Um, of this thing. Update, split this, and move Y to here. That should do it. Uh, 
press E on it, it moves, press E, does that. And it's at the bottom because it over um, the current function overrides x and z. So what we want is to check the z value of this thing. It's x is pretty much zero. It's z is twenty-seven point whatever. So I'll just copy that. And in the event graph, just place it there. That's not too bad, actually. Always plays from the start, but apart from that, it looks all right. Maybe speed up a little bit if you want to. Right, so for the last thing, we're going to add, well, I'm going to show you how to add it, reverse from end, and then you can add it while save. So what we did, we changed from place from start to reverse from end, which does the closing bit. Now your task is to create a variable, a billion variable to store the state of the drawer so they, if it's open, then close it, and if it's um, closed, then open it. So that's one task. Another task is to make this a bit more generalizable in, in terms of, you don't want this to just open one drawer and then have an entirely different function or event to open the second drawer. So what you want is to create a, an event that takes the thing that it, you want to move. So you want to take this mesh as a variable or as an input rather than um, hard-coded. In which case you're able to just focus on this thing, press E, figure out which component it is that you're looking at based on um, hit result because it tells you the hit component. So you can use this to then figure out which one you pressed E on and then move that one. And obviously, each of those things needs um, a variable to store whether that particular drawer is open or closed. That should be a reasonable extension for um, next week's lecture, actually, because that's when we're going to cover data structures. Right, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.